Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to talk to you about why heat sinks are so important for Gen 5 NVMe SSDs. So this is the Crucial T700, which I'm going to use as a demonstration purpose to show you why they matter and what a difference they make. These drives are the fastest drives that money can buy at the moment and top out a ridiculous 12,000 megabytes per second read and comparable write speeds as well. I'll leave the specs in the description, but they're available in two different versions, one with and one without a heatsink. Now, Crucial was kind enough to send me both, so I wanted to do some tests to see what we could do with it, and I managed to get the T700 without a heatsink to 628,000 megabytes per second read speed, which is obviously not right, and I want to demonstrate how I did that and why you need to bear these things in mind before you're purchasing one of these drives, and also why it's important to buy the one with the heatsink if you can, because the heatsink on this thing is absolutely massive, and with good reason, because this drive ramps up to a very hot temperature. Obviously, with very fast speeds, it's also going to get pretty toasty. Now, I've done a number of different guides on NVMe SSDs, and why you need to bear in mind things about like the stickers, the heat sinks, the performance, and obviously the socketing of them as well. It's important to bear in mind the generation because you need to make sure you've got a motherboard that will work with. So this is a Gen 5 drive. You need a motherboard that supports it. So here I've got the Gigabyte X670 Gaming XAX, which fortunately has one port on it. The top one, closest to the CPU, which supports PCIe Gen 5. The other drives on here do not, so it does have multiple ports, but it will only support Gen 5 drive on the top one. And you may find that your motherboard doesn't support PCIe Gen 5, because even some of the more recent Z790 motherboards don't have that support, so it's worth bearing that in mind. The installation process for a Gen 5 SSD is basically the same, though. It is just slotting it in. You'll notice this Gigabyte one has a nice little clip instead of the classic M2 screw, so it's pretty easy to install, and it's set up that then we can't use the standard heatsink. Now once I installed this, I wanted to run through a number of tests, so I'm using Crystal Disk Mark here, along with Hardware Monitor that you can see in the top right, Task Manager to show what's going on in it, and just ran through multiple passes. So what I'm doing is basically benchmarking the drive as much as possible. So the initial pass, the read speed is 12,333 megabytes per second, Decent speed there, pretty impressive, and it continues to be impressive in a number of different ways. Obviously, this basically runs through passes at basically the equivalent of transferring a large file onto the drive and then loads of little files. Now, the more you do, the more work you put it through, the slower it gets. So don't expect you can get 12,000 megabytes every time. And that's the same with any drive. The more pressure you put it under the slower it becomes. So it's worth bearing that in mind. But you'll see those top scores are pretty fantastic. This is a seriously fast drive. It's significantly faster than the PCIe Gen 4 drive, the Crucial P5, which is a fantastic drive in itself. But obviously, you need the hardware to run it. You need the latest motherboard. You need a motherboard that supports PCIe Gen 5. And you also need good cooling. Good cooling is going to be really, really important in your build here. And I'm going to demonstrate why with basically showing off the temperatures. So you'll see that the max temperature that this drive ran at was 82 degrees C. Now I did several passes on Crystal Disk Mark because I wanted to demonstrate some things. So I also wanted to test and make sure that if you put it under constant pressure, see what that delivers. Now I'll leave the specs of my system that I tested it in in the description so you can find out more about the specs. Obviously you're going to get a different experience depending on your ambient temperature and on your case and what you've got included in there. But keeping it cool is obviously important, but you can see that it runs really hot. This is very hot for the drive, and Gen 4 drives won't run nearly as hot as Gen 5. Now, it is really important to note that temperature because it will have a negative impact on it, and Crucial even notes this on their website. So if you head over to their website and look at the T700 page, if you scroll down to the small print, you'll see that it recommends that the non-heatsink version of the T700 needs to be installed with a motherboard heat shield or alternative heat sink for optimum performance. The reviewer's guide also notes that it has adaptive thermal protection on this drive so that it will thermal throttle when it goes over 81 degrees C and it will shut down at 90 degrees C. So you can't actually damage the drive theoretically, but if you are putting it under constant pressure, so you'd have to be transferring a lot of files over to it constantly, then you may well find it slows down and then eventually 
causes problems. Now, if you're not using the heatsink, this could potentially be a massive issue as well, but more on that in a second. Now you can see here that I've run more passes. So I put the system under more load. I ran Heaven Benchmark, Cinebench, and I also ran Crystal Disk Mark again several more times. I wanted to do this, basically go through a process to make it a more realistic test to make sure my his system was pretty hot. Both the GPU was churning out heat, the CPU was churning out heat. The rest of the system is obviously getting hot as well. Obviously the fans are running as well, but you can see that the speeds are halved. We now got half the speed and I'm only at 83 degrees C. So it's halved its read write speeds and we're one degree hotter than we were initially. So even on the first pass, it was hot. Now it's a little bit hotter and suddenly it's thermal throttled. So it can make quite a bit of difference. Now in the real world, you're probably not going to be putting it under quite that much pressure. You're not going to be constantly doing that, but it is worth keeping in mind that if you are running it on Windows, so if it's your operating drive, and it does get too hot, that could cause a problem. If you notice that if it gets to 90 degrees, it will shut down and won't work. That means if it drives too hot and you don't look after it, as in you don't have a good heatsink on it, and you've got the non-heatsink version, and then you try and run it, it might well mean that your system just shuts down without warning. You're not going to lose the files, but it could potentially be a problem. Now, I wanted to also demonstrate that it does get hot. So I ran it in this system here, and then I wanted to obviously then swap out the drive for the non-heatsink version to be able to demonstrate the next part. But you can see even the external heat sinks getting up to the 70 degrees, so pretty hot. So I had to wait for it to cool down before I could remove that drive and then go about installing the one without the heat sink. And here, this is the drive that you can buy that they recommend. You definitely make sure you use a heatsink with it. But for the sake of testing, I wanted to do it without just to demonstrate how terrible it is. And you've seen that I ran it and initially it got 72,000 megabytes a second read speed. <laughs> Obviously, that was an indicator there was a problem. So I turned the PC off and then I turned it back on again. I ran it again and then it showed up to 628,000 megabytes a second. Uh, this is obviously an indicator that things have gone awry. The drive is basically saying there's a problem here and it's alerting me to that issue. So I went back in and I ran it again and then I found out I was getting half the speeds. There was basically all sorts of issues with the drive where basically you cannot run it without a heatsink. It just gets too hot too quickly and then basically causes problems. Now you can see that hardware monitor actually shows it was at 57 degrees. I don't think this is factually accurate. I think what happened is it just freaked out and the system then had a problem and it basically couldn't even register the sensor temperature because when I tried to boot with Windows, it didn't even recognize the drive. I had to let it cool down a bit before it would work again. So it's really important to use a heat sink. You can see here the standard one with this gigabyte motherboard it comes with a thermal pad on it. So you've got to make sure you remove the sticker off that, then put the heat sink down on top of it and then screw it down. I did a video recently on whether these matter where I tested it with a WD Black SN850 and I found that these made quite a bit of difference. And it's the same thing here. These make quite a significant difference to the performance because I found as soon as I put this heat sink on, now I was getting a lot faster speed. You'll notice this isn't as fast as the one with the heat sink though. So you're getting 11,000 megabytes a second read speed. The write speed's not as fast, so it's certainly not as good. Interesting point of note here is that the drive temperature though is only about 79 degrees. But obviously I've caused some dramas with it with the testing, so it's worth keeping in mind that you may not have the same problem, but basically don't try and install this on a motherboard where you don't have a heat sink. Make sure you've got a good heat sink in there or purchase the fancier one. And otherwise you're gonna come up with a various number of problems. But you can see if I then have it running a normal sort of performance, basically I managed to get it going standard way everything was transferring nicely but then now I'm up to 82 degrees and it's thermal throttling again so this is with the heat sink on as I said but now we're getting a half the speed that we should be and that's because it's at 82 degrees so the conclusion is buy the heat sink one because it's fancier and it will keep it cooler make sure you've got good fans in your system and take care to ensure that you're using the right hardware this has been the provoke prawn thanks for watching You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.